there are three factors that dictate how good your autumn colour is going to be. One of them is the plants, and I've got some good plant suggestions later on in this video. The second one is actually where you plant them. And I've got an amazing example in this garden of where I've got two identical trees planted, and one is in the perfect place for autumn colour, and the other is in the worst place for autumn colour. And the third thing, which you can't do a lot about, is your weather, which is slightly different from your climate, but let's look at how that affects it. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog, and it's the Autumn Garden Tour with an emphasis on how you can get the best possible autumn colour in your garden. I'll put links to any resources in the description below with timestamps so you can jump to any part of the video you particularly want to see. And if you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads weekly with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So if you'd like to see the videos when you open up YouTube, they're free, then just tap the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, tap the notifications bell. So let's take weather first, shall we? Or indeed, climate. Your climate, obviously, is the zone you live in, and here in South East England we very roughly equate to a USDA hardiness zone of 9, because our winters are very mild and we rarely go below minus 6 Celsius, 21 Fahrenheit. But your weather is, of course, what happens every year. It's whether it's particularly rainy or it's sunny or it's warm or whatever, and recently the weather has not been good for autumn colour. And to understand that, I'll explain what makes autumn colour. Chlorophyll makes leaves green, and it's chlorophyll that means that leaves can translate the sunshine into nutrition for the plant. And as the summer ends, the chlorophyll gets reabsorbed into the plants. So other elements in the leaves become much more prominent and they dictate the colour. So when you see leaves turning yellow, that's because of the carotenoids, which is the ingredient that makes carrots orange. But to get the reds and purples of autumn, you need something called anthracinins. Now, anthracinins react really well. They're at their best when you've got lots of sunny days and then cool but not freezing nights. And anthracinins also become milder and weaker if you have a lot of rain. So for the last few weeks, we've actually had a very kind of mild temperature. The days have been about anything between 15, 16, 17 Celsius, and the nights have been 10 or 11, and it's not a big difference. They haven't always been very sunny days, and sometimes it's rained quite a lot. So this is not good conditions for good autumn colour. But even so, if you choose the right plants, then you can still get a good autumn display. So now I'll go on to some good plants in this garden that you can grow where you are for lovely autumn colour. When you come out of our back door, you come out onto our terrace and you go up some steps onto the parterre. And on the right of the parterre is a wonderfully sunny border, which is where I grow all my dahlias and my roses, and that's where I concentrate a lot of the colour in the garden. And on the left-hand side is the north-facing border, which is naturally shady. This tree here, this liquid amber, is planted in the sunny border, where it's getting the maximum amount of sun. And there's an exactly identical liquid amber planted on the shady side of the garden and the north-facing border. And as you can see, this liquid amber is full of reds and golds and autumn colour and it's been like that for about the last two or three weeks. But the liquid amber on the other side of the garden, which is probably only about 20 feet away, is just basically green and the leaves are turning yellow and then dropping off immediately because it's not getting the sun to stimulate the anthracinins. So that I think is a very amazing lesson of really where you plant it makes a huge difference. So what are the best plants for an autumn garden? Well, when you think about fall colour, you just always think about trees. And the top tree is generally considered to be the maple, but I don't have any in this garden. But it's well worth looking up maples because there are lots of smaller ones, which are great for smaller gardens. And also some of them are very happy in partial shade. So you will get some good autumn colour, even in the shadier borders. I have these two liquid amber trees, uh, but even better than liquid amber because they do get quite tall. They can get to 20 metres high. And so that's not really suitable for, for some smaller gardens. But Amelanchia is a tree that only gets to about 10 metres high and has lovely autumn colour and so is very good for smaller gardens. I've got an Amelanchia leaf here. And you can keep the size even more under control by having it multi-stemmed. And that's when somebody cuts it right down to the ground and instead of having one trunk going up, it's got three or four or five stems. And that looks very pretty and it keeps it under control for smaller gardens. 
One of the things to think about when you're looking for autumn colour is to get a plant or a tree or a shrub with two seasons of interest. And of course this makes fruit trees absolutely wonderful because they've usually got blossom in spring, they have fruit in the autumn and they also, many of them, have excellent leaf colour in the autumn. Some fruit trees are ornamental like this one here and this is an ornamental plum and it's called snow goose and I, although it doesn't have fruit because it's ornamental I do really value it in the garden because it has beautiful white flowers in spring and in autumn it usually goes a rich rusty red orange it hasn't quite turned yet it may be that it will do in a week or two's time or it may just be the sort of very mild weather and the rain we've been having but normally this is a lovely blaze of colour and also what's particularly nice about it is it has this vase shape so it doesn't cast much shade on the ground it's a very good tree for smaller gardens. Last year I went to Leonardsley Lakes and Gardens which is famous for its autumn colour and I interviewed their head gardener who gave me recommendations on how to choose trees for autumn colour so I'll put that video down in the description below. And now of course the next layer in the, down in the garden is shrubs and they are so important because they're easy to look after. Shrubs are plants with woody stems that stay above the ground all year round. And some of them are deciduous, and those that are deciduous lose their leaves in autumn. But before they lose their leaves, they often turn a gorgeous colour. And one of the shrubs I can strongly recommend is viburnum. There are two in my garden that are really good. One is viburnum bodnansi dawn. I'm sorry, I don't probably pronounce that properly. But it turns a beautiful red in the autumn, and then the leaves fall off. And for the whole of the winter, we have these really pretty pink flowers. And this viburnum here is viburnum opulus and it has lovely, it's called the snowball bush and it has lovely white pom-pom flowers in spring and then you can just see this red is turning just now and once again sometimes this is a blaze of red and orange and we may well get that in a few weeks time or we may just be having not such good autumn colour this year. When choosing a viburnum opulus it's worth remembering you can get the sterile form and the non-sterile form and the non-sterile form has berries and I wish I'd known that when I bought this because I would have loved to have had berries. We don't have berries. It's called sterile roseum, this particular one. It's viburnum opulus sterile roseum. It doesn't have berries but if you get the ordinary roseum you will get berries as well as the white flowers and the autumn colour. This plant here is cornus and there are a number of cornus shrubs that are fantastic for colour. Last year I went to Gravetime Manor Hotel and they have the most fabulous gardens if you can ever go and visit, do. And I asked the head gardener, Tom Coward, for his recommendations for six top shrubs for autumn colour. And Cornus was one of the ones he recommended. But at Gravetime Manor they were in the sun and they were a blaze of wonderful colour of reds and yellows. I've planted these cornices in front of a silver birch tree and they're basically underneath a clump of trees so they're just not getting the sun that they need for the autumn colour. But on the other hand the stems do look lovely in winter in front of the silver birch so I don't entirely regret it but if you are thinking of planting cornice for autumn colour then do make sure they get a bit of a sunny spot. I mean this is a very shady spot so just a little bit more sun than this would probably work well. One of the other shrubs that Tom Coward recommended was Euonymus. Euonymus alatus and Euonymus europaeus are just amazing shrubs for autumn colour. So I'll just show you a little bit there. Those are at Gravetime Manor, not at my house. And of course, if you're looking at another shrub, hydrangeas give you such good value towards the end of the season. They usually start flowering in late summer or perhaps even midsummer, and then their flowers dry and become a wonderful sculptural shape in winter. And also a lot of hydrangeas have got absolutely brilliant autumn colour on their leaves. And the best one for this is the oak leaf hydrangea or hydrangea quercifolia, which I've got over here in this corner of the garden. It's a partially shaded corner, it does have some sun, and this on the whole has pretty good colour. And there's another hydrangea called Hydrangea Aspera Hot Chocolate, which I've got in a very shady bed, and it still gives me some wonderful colour. So if you're looking for autumn colour in your shadier beds, then definitely think of hydrangeas. And don't forget the power of grasses for fabulous colour in the autumn garden. I've got some grasses here. This is called Panicum Vergatum Shenandoah and I grow them in pots, there's four of them, uh, in the lavender beds around the sundial and they are so easy care. Of course all plants in pots need to be fed during the summer but what you can do is either put a slow release plant feed in at the beginning of the, the spring or you can feed them weekly with a liquid feed when you're feeding your vegetables and your other plants in pots. 
Apart from that, these grasses absolutely need no care and they grow up during the summer and then in the autumn they turn these lovely red gold colours and in the winter they turn brown so it's just a lovely sculptural shape and they look lovely frosted and everything like that and then when it comes to spring we cut them down again and then they grow up over the summer green again and so that is such easy care and I leave them in the pots for two to three years at a time and then I take them out and I lift and divide them. Of course one of the things to think about is that at this time of the year we're getting an awful lot of leaves on the lawn and leaves falling because of course of the autumn colour. And we find the easiest way to deal with leaves on the lawn is simply to mow them. You don't really need to use a leaf blower or a rake, just mow over them and then the chopped up leaves are with the chopped up grass and you can put it into the compost or even straight back on the borders as a mulch. When leaves fall into the borders, I don't really think that there's much need to clear them up. They'll offer shelter for wildlife over the winter. They'll slowly decompose and add nutrition to the borders for the, for the spring. And they really don't cause any trouble. But if something very thick and leathery like these Magnolia grandiflora leaves land, well, those can cover up plants. So I do take those out. And of course climbers are such an important part of a garden and I've got a video in the description below about how to choose climbers but the particular climber I'm thinking of for autumn colour is Virginia creeper. Now Virginia creeper Parthenocissus quinquefolia is a real invasive one, it just goes everywhere. So there are parts of the world where you can't grow it. But, but, but this one I've got here is Chinese Virginia creeper otherwise known as Parthenocissus henriana, and that's much less aggressive. We do have to clip it back two or three times a year, so it's not no maintenance, but otherwise it clothes the building. As you can see, the leaves are just beginning to turn red. However, I think we see the actions of anthracinins here, because I never get a great big red covered wall just full of autumn colour. What happens is that a few leaves go red and then all the leaves drop off and then I've got a bare wall. And I think that's because this climber is on the back of the house. And the house, of course, as the winter gets colder, we've got the heating on, the house wall retains warmth. So the Virginia creeper on the back of this house never gets cold enough to have the sunny days, cold nights, etc., that would give it the really best autumn colour. But if, of course, you put it over a fence or something, that would be quite different because you wouldn't have the warmth of the house. So if you're interested in having a gorgeous autumn garden, there's an autumn gardens playlist at the end of this video and let me know what plants you find best for autumn colour in your garden. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.